Hello, my name is Tommy Boland and I'm Professor of Ruminant Nutrition and Sheep Production in University College Dublin. Today I'm joining you from the Devonish farm at Doubt where we're looking at our research on multi-species swords. So multi-species swords is a term that many of you will have become familiar with in the recent years. Basically what a multi-species sword is, it is a sword mixture uh, which contains a series of different plant types or a series of species. The sward I'm standing in here now contains six different species. They contain grasses, legumes and herbs. The idea of a multi-species sward is that it will take different species types and different functional groups and build them together to give a sward with a higher variety of plants which will support a number of different functions on the farm, whether that be in terms of supporting animal performance, supporting biodiversity, or helping to increase soil fertility and soil carbon sequestration. So where I'm standing now, it's a very good example of a multi-species sward here at Doubt. But if you're to look across the, the field and look across the paddock behind, it's probably dominated visually by one species, uh, which is red clover. So this, for example, this is a red clover plant, and it's very easy to differentiate when you see the red flower or the red seed had been produced. But when you're looking at your own swords at home, if you want to differentiate between red clover and white clover, if you turn over the leaf of the red clover, it's, it's hairy underneath or it looks, it looks dull. Um, compared to the white clover leaf, it's, it's shinier underneath and it doesn't have those hairs present. When we do a dry matter count on this and we establish how much red clover is in this sward, it accounts for about 50% of the total dry matter. The next plant which is obvious uh, in the sward is chicory and chicory is characterized by these blue flowers. Now for most of the growing season and for most of the grazing season you won't actually see the chicory flower on the plant like that but you'll be more likely to see the chicory leaf like this which looks very much like a salad leaf that you'd actually see in a salad bowl or a bag of salad you'd purchase in the supermarket and indeed chicory is, is an edible plant. The other main species we're seeing here in the sward at the moment is plantain and again many of you will be familiar with this plant in your own pastures and again it's quite easy to tell due to these strong ribs running up the back of the leaf. Now down in the base of the sward uh, we have some white clover and we also have our grasses growing down in the base of the sward but because the red clover and the chicory and the plantain they have a much more upright growth habit they are the plants which are dominating the sward visually. In our work so far, we have recorded improvements in animal performance, in animal average daily gain with sheep, in the killer percentage of lambs which were finished. Uh, those lambs were finished faster, so they reached their target slaughter weight earlier when they were grazing multi-species swords uh, compared to perennial ryegrass only. Uh, we also noted that the animals grazing the multi-species swords uh, had a reduced requirement for dosing or for antihelmintics to control intestinal parasites. We actually reduced the administration of antihelmintics by 50% for our animals which are grazing multi-species swords. The lambs suckling the ewes which are grazing the multi-species swords had increased growth rates of about 16% from birth to weaning and that was predominantly coming from increased milk quality or increased milk quality uh, produced by their dam or produced by the ewe. The second set of benefits um, or advantage of multi-species wards looks at the environmental potential of these multi-species wards. We have recorded increased earthworm populations and earthworm activity in the soils where multi-species wards are grown. There is an increase in the invertebrate biodiversity uh, indicating um, that there are more invertebrates pr present and that is a greater food source for those invertebrates to feed on. We've also recorded higher water infiltration rates into the soils which are growing multi-species swards. And some of my colleagues, Dr. Paul Murphy and his team have modeled the nitrous oxide emissions uh, from multi-species swards. And he predicted that the quantity of nitrous oxide produced per kilo of dry matter is reduced by 90% with multi-species swards compared to a perennial ryegrass monoculture. And the presence of plants like clover, red and white clover, and potentially even chicory and plantain would be expected to reduce methane emissions from animals grazing these swards, 
though those measurements need to be carried out uh, on animals grazing these swards. Okay, when we look at managing multi-species swards, there are a few important differences that we need to consider compared to a, maybe a standard uh, perennial ryegrass sward. Perhaps the biggest challenge um, that, that will occur at farm level is the absence of herbicides to control invasive weeds in a sward. So I'm talking about things like ragwort, dock leaf, uh, thistle, nettle, these type, these type of weed species. Now our research has shown that when we plant a multi-species sward like the one I'm standing in here, that it's actually naturally more protective from weed ingress or from weed occurrence in the in the sward. You know, our research is showing that we would be moving into higher pre-grazing uh, herbage yields than what you would normally use for a perennial ryegrass sward, and then similarly, we're moving the animals out at a higher post-grazing sward height, particularly with chicory. Chicory regrows based on the reserves it has in its roots. If we graze that chicory plant down to a very low post-grazing sward height, in a very short space of time, that plant will disappear out of the sward if we graze it to too low uh, post-grazing sward height. Okay.